There you go, Mark Feinstein is here, Bo Porter. I hope we're in a baseball ops meeting and we're kicking <laughs> this around, Bo, and we're doing it. Sounds crazy, but again, having watched it last night, it seems so evident. Why are those two starters in when you're using the big guys later anyway when the game is already lost? Well, first of all, you have to realize that elimination games are totally different than anything you've okay. done mm -hmm. all season. Right. And from a managerial standpoint, you have to remove all emotion from what you have done to get to this point. And every decision that you're going to make has to be based on how do we win this moment. Mm. So I am in complete agreement. And for me, this was probably one of the best learning curves that I had as a young manager because you want to believe in the guy that got you there. You want to believe in your player. Mm. But at the end of the day, I think you look at each one of these situations, you have to start with who's available first and foremost. So if you are Dusty Baker and you have your A bullpen available, the moment you get in trouble in this game, A you score. have to yeah. kill the inning. Right. You right. have to kill the inning. Mark, what do you think? 100%. You know, you look at it, Javier gives him a surprisingly short and bad start. Right. This is a guy who had been excellent in his four postseason starts in his career. Uh, but at that point, you can't let this game get out of hand. And you don't know what those two pitchers, Hunter Brown, you have no idea what he's going to give you in this situation. This is game seven. This is not a situation where, oh, we're throwing you into a game in August in the second inning or the first inning or the third right. inning. This is game seven. There's a different mentality, not only for the manager to have to think, I need to kill this inning and move on and give myself another chance to get back in this game. There's a different mentality for these pitchers. And if you've never pitched in a game seven, wouldn't you rather have the guys who are used to pitching under the biggest pressure in the late innings, wouldn't you rather have them in there to try to give your team a chance to stay in that game and give your offense, which has the capability right, to right. come back, a chance to come back? Buy them some time to get back into the game. And so what are you going to do in the ninth inning? Worry about that in the ninth inning. Now, I want to go to a specific game here. I was at this game. It was the Phillies and the Padres National League Championship Series. And I was there when Bo, Mike Clevenger blew up. He couldn't get an out for the Padres last year, and Phillies come storming back because they had a 4 nothing lead going into this <clears throat> second. And for Bob Melvin, who was managing that game, immediately out from the, from the bullpen comes trotting Nick Martinez, A squad. Kind of their best guy, not Craig Kimbrell, but A squad. He shut him down for three innings, and Bo, I thought, uh-oh, there's their best guy. What a smart move. Now, from there, they went to Sean Manaya, and yeah, it got away. You, now, that's game four. It's not an elimination game, but it's just an example of, hey, what if I brought my eighth or ninth inning guy in right Right now, first or second inning, how uncomfortable is the other team? Very uncomfortable. Yes, they are. And when you start the game, when you look at your A-squad bullpen, you say to yourself, okay, this is a nine-inning game. If I have my A-squad bullpen and I'm saying I have three guys that if we need to extend them two innings to win this game, they are available. So now that's six innings. All right, I'm in the first inning. I, if, I, if I can just get to the 6th or 7th and still have a lead... Take your chance. I'm going to take my chances. Yeah, right. So whatever, if the start... You look at what, what, what um, Bochy was able to do last night. Max Scherzer gave him two and two-thirds of an... What? No, three. Sorry. No, two and two-thirds. Two and two-thirds. Two and two-thirds right. yeah. two yeah. two -thirds of an inning. At that point, he went to Montgomery and immediately went to one of his better options that was available. Right. Saying that I'm going to try to get as far as I can in this game with my A pitchers to get the ball to the back end of my bullpen. But if that game gets out of hand or you get in trouble, you have to go to your best option available to kill that inning. I'm going to give you a specific example of also, like, wanting to save your ninth inning guy for the ninth inning, your big leverage guy. Take a look at this. Pete Fairbanks was the big leverage guy for the Rays. He did not pitch in that wild card series. That opportunity just never presented itself. Tanner Scott of the Marlins pitched in garbage time. They were down 7-1 in game two. Ryan Presley, game seven. By the way, like, our own Joel Sherman wrote a column saying Ryan Presley is one of the, like, best playoff relievers in history. He's right. Did not pitch in game seven. So, I don't know the reticence. Again, in the light of day when we're not there, say, hey, fellas, is there another way to think about this? Our relief ace closer using him somewhere where it's still a ball game. You know, I think when you look at that Padres game that you pointed out before, it shows exactly what you're talking about because they were down 3 0, 4 0. Yeah. They brought Martinez in. He pitched three innings. It was 4 3 when he left. So bringing Manaya in at that point, maybe not your A squad guy, but it's a one run game and you've gotten back in. Maybe you're thinking, I need somebody who can give me right, a little right. distance. And, that, and we're back in the game. We got ourselves back in the game because Martinez came in and did what he did. And I think when you look at 
the Astros last night, if they had been able to bring in a Breu uh, or or Neris or a couple of those guys to just hold the fort. Let's, right. Let's just put out the fire, calm things down, get the ballpark back into the game a little bit. And by the time those guys came in, it's 8-2. It's over. And it's over. Yeah. It's, well, it's amazing. BK, yeah. BK, we talk about break points all the time. And – even though that's your A squad, and you may say in a perfect world before the game starts at 2 o'clock, you're sitting there and you're going through how you want to map this out. He's going to pitch the 7, he's going to pitch the 8, he's going to pitch the ninth. That's a perfect scenario. Well, once the humans get moving around and the baseball game start, right. that, well, that, that's Javier last yeah, night. It's like that pocket, killed. That pocket yeah. may be in the second inning. Yeah. To where if you don't put out that fire in the second inning, there is no 7th, right. 8th, and right. ninth to save the game. The right. game is happening Right there, right now, right. you got to put that fire out. Right. 